Hey, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson, and you're watching Get Your Sax Together, the home of online saxophone lessons. Now, on this week's lesson, you're going to learn some tips and tricks of how to write down in music notation your solos, your solo transcriptions, because this is a really hard part of the process when you're transcribing and you want to write it down. I see a lot of students make a lot of mistakes. So before you try and write down the music of your solos, your favorite transcriptions, keep watching I've got some really cool tips and tricks for you. Now, there's a PDF, um, it's an infographic which I've done, which is explaining my four step process for successfully writing out your solos. You can see the link for that PDF right there. Just go to that URL or click the link in the description to get your free PDF. And if you want another hour of um, teaching from me, go and check out my free Saxophone Success Masterclass. You can see the URL there or click the link in the description. That is a free one hour session Session where I take you through all sorts of stuff to do with playing saxophone. It's really cool, it's a lot of fun, and it's going to really help you. So that's the resources for today. Without further ado, let's jump behind the camera, get into the screen, and I'll walk you through these four steps to write out music and get it all set nicely in all the bars and all the tricky stuff that you never know how to do. So here we go. Okay, so you've transcribed your solo or you worked out your song or you know what the music is that you want to write down and here you are staring at your blank manuscript. Now over there, I have got a cool infographic which is going to walk you through this exact process and you can download this for free just using the link in the description. Now for, to, for this segment of the lesson, I'm just going to be writing by hand on manuscript, but normally I use software and later on when I demonstrate uh, an example we're going to use uh, software. So you want to write down your thing on manuscript, where do you start? Well obviously we're sax players, everything we do is going to use a treble clef, so we put our clef in. Now over there you can see step one is setup and formatting. This is very important, you have to lay out very carefully what you're going to do before you do it and then it'll make your life much easier in the process. Don't just start writing from the beginning and see what happens. You've got to plan it all out first. That's going to make a big difference to how easy it is to write out music. So first of all, we've got a time signature. Now you've got one, uh, let's just say we're in 4-4 for the moment. You've got a choice to make whether to write it in half time or double time. So you can either have fast quarter notes, fast crotchets, or half time. Now, if you write it in normal time, that would just be 4-4. Four, four. So you can either put C or you can write 4-4. Four, four. Now, if your quarter notes, your crotches are going twice as fast as that, then you can write it in cut common time. And cut common time is a C with a line through it. And that means that the quarter notes are going twice as fast. You know, you feel the music in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, instead of one, two, three, four. Now this can make it easier, particularly if you've got uh, fast music and you don't write, want to write it all in 16th notes, in semiquavers. So that's the first thing that we need to pay attention to is your time signature. Now, you're probably going to be in 4-4. Four, four. Not necessarily, it might be 3-4, might be 6-8, but let's just say, you know, for the purposes of today that we're going to be in 4-4. Four, four. So let's mark that in now. There's our time signature. The next thing is your key signature. Now, the, the decision you need to make here is, are you going to use a key signature? If you're not used to key signatures, you might be easier just writing the accidentals next to each note. And it also very much depends on the nature of the music. If you're doing a very complicated solo with lots of accidentals, you might be better off not using a key signature. Or if it's mainly diatonic, you might be better off using a key signature. So. Let's just say we're in C major for now. The next thing is to work out how many bars you want to put per line on average. Now, this doesn't have to be set in stone, but it's a good guide. Now, if you're writing jazz and it's mainly eighth notes, you probably want to do four bars per line. Okay, four bars per line. So uh, the first thing to do is to put your bar line at the end of each stave like this. Then, once you've done that, then you do a bar line in the middle of each stave, approximately in the middle of each stave, and then you half it again. 
and that gives you your four bars per line. That is not rocket science, is it? And then you go down the rest of your manuscript paper, just like this. That one was a bit squint. Sorry about that. Uh, you're not going to be able to see some of this because of the, uh, the position of my camera. So I'm just marking in all these bar lines and then you end up with a piece of manuscript paper that is all <laughs> divided into four bars. And with any luck, yours will be a lot neater than mine. You should use a ruler for this, ideally. Um, if you are writing straight onto paper, I would use pencil, by the way, so you can quickly rub it out. Um, if you're using software, no problem. You can change it anytime you want. So there you've got your number of bars Per line. Now, if it's more like a sort of funk thing with a lot of 16th notes, uh, you might be as little as two bars per line. Now, the fourth point over there, which you can see from the infographic in the initial setup and formatting, is to lay out the structure of your song. Now, this is very important because you want to see the whole map, the whole structure of the song before you start. So when you start filling it in, you're not going to get lost and do weird numbers of bars that don't add up and things like that. So let's just say that we've got a song and it's A for eight bars and B for eight bars, just a simple A, B song. <laughs> what you want to do is lay out your page and you want to add double bar lines after each section. So we've got just a simple eight bars, eight bars. So I'm going to put a double bar line in there and I'm going to put a double bar line kind of, <laughs> you won't be able to see it unfortunately. Um, I'll put a double bar line in there. Look, just for a second, I'll move this so you can see. Look, there it is. <laughs> All right. Now, it's also useful to mark in the names of the section. So let's just say this is section A. And let's just say that this is section B. Now, because I've got a double bar line um, at the end of the previous line, of course, I need a double bar line here as well. Right. Now, that's our sections laid out. And then the next section down here would be the second chorus. So another thing you might want to do is mark in A1. B1. That means that that is the first chorus. And then when you get down to the second chorus, you might want to do A2, B2, and then A3, B3. And you can see all the choruses marked out really clearly. So if you're transcribing a blues, say, you could put chorus one, and then you've got 12 bars, double bar line. Chorus two, 12 bars, double bar line, and each 12 bars divided into three lines of four. This is going to make a massive difference to how easy it is to write out your music, believe me. Okay, that takes care of some of the basics of the setup and formatting, which is a really important part of the process before you start. Let's now move on to number two, which is some basic notation rules. I'm going to just rub out what we've got so far. Okay, that's everything rubbed out. So we've got like a blank sheet again. So the first basic notation rule is that... Um, you need to observe the half bar. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say we're in 4-4, in, um, in four, four, just for the sake of argument. It means that between the second beat and the third beat, there shouldn't be anything tied over. So, for example, let's say we've got the rhythm 1, 2, 3, 4, ba, 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 ba. Okay, 3, 4, ba, 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 ba. You could write that rhythm like this. I'm just going to do it all on C's, okay? Ba, 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 ba. That is what the rhythm is. But there is a note which comes in the middle of the bar line, and you can't see the gap between the second and third beats, okay? So what we're going to do instead is we're going to rewrite this like this. Ba, 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 okay, like that. Now you can see quite clearly that there is the half bar there. So we're observing the half bar, and it makes it much easier to read when you can see the bar divided into two halves. Now this is true if you've got mainly eighth note quaver rhythms or 16th note semi-quaver rhythms. You must see the half bar. Now, there probably is one exception to that rule, which I'll uh, I'll give you I'll give you one exception to the rule, guys, and that is if you have this rhythm, bum 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 bum. 
you know, I would let you away with that because it's such a simple rhythm that I don't think that's too much of a problem. But apart from that, let's make sure that we can see the half bar. Okay, moving on to point two. When you have got music uh, which is got 16th notes in it, semiquavers in it, like funk music, you need to make sure that you can see every beat on its own because it's quite hard to read 16th note rhythms anyway. So let's say um, we wanted to write the rhythm. Uh, let's do the, the exact same rhythm actually, just in, in uh, half time. So da 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 da. Okay, so I'm gonna go three, four. Da, 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 da. And if you think it's hard to notate rhythms, don't worry because that's coming up in the next section, all right? Now then, this is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> if you're trying to read music and it looks like this, let me, it's actually quite hard for me to even do it, but I'll, let me have a go. So da, 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 da. You, um, you could write it like this. Let's have a go. Bam, 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 bam. Bum bum. So it's gonna be uh bum 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 bum. Okay. Bum 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 bum. And uh that would be the whole bar. That, my friend, is an absolute nightmare to read. Now there's only one way you could make that worse. And you know, you do see stuff like this, you do see it, believe me, if you heard that. That is ultimate nightmare trying to read. <laughs> Why? Because you can't see where the beats are. It's very, very, very difficult to read because you can't see the beats are. So um, what you want to do instead is make sure that you can see each beat. So I'm going to rewrite this whole rhythm. This bit's okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to leave that. Let's rub out from here and redo it properly, observing each beat distinctly. So it's gonna be like this. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. And I'm gonna tie over there instead, you see? Right, there we go. Now, that way, you can see clearly the gap between the beats. And it's much easier to read that rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. So make sure that, especially when you're using 16th notes, that you can clearly see where each beat is. That's very, very important. Now, moving on to the third point there, the, the bar must add up. Now, this seems like a really obvious thing. And if you've got notation software, it probably won't even let you do something that doesn't add up. But let's say, <laughs> let's say for the sake of argument, you wrote something like you had that and then you did that. Okay. Well, that's not enough beats in the bar and it suddenly makes it incredibly difficult to read. And it's completely wrong anyway. It's just not musically uh, legitimate. So... It's a very obvious point, but just make sure, once you've written your thing out, that you can see each beat, you can see the half bar, and that the bar adds up. These simple things will make a dramatic difference to how, uh, how legible your music is. Okay, and finally, here's an interesting little point. I'm just gonna correct this bar to, uh, to make it a full bar again. If you've got a short note, it's usually easier to mark that short note as a staccato rather than write a short note. Now, what do I mean, what do I mean by that? Let's take the example we're working with right now. Da, 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 da. Let's say that that last note is short, okay? What you should do is just write a dot above it. And then when somebody's playing that, they're gonna go da, 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 da. They're just gonna play it short. In classical music, now, and you know, in classical music, officially, I believe a staccato means something like play it half the length of what it is, but where the rubber hits the road, a dot means short. So if you see a dot, it's just gonna be a short note, the same, no matter what the note value is, short is short. Okay, so what's the wrong way to write it, if that's the right way? I'll tell you what the wrong way to write it is, like this. Uh, I'm gonna have to give myself just a little bit more space here. The wrong way to write it is this even though in theory, that might be what it sounds like. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. That 
is much, much more confusing. <laughs> so um, let's take another example for this uh, writing short notes thing. Let's just say it was four short notes. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. You definitely do not want to write this. All right. This <laughs> is an incredibly messy and annoying way of writing it where you could quite easily write it like this. Two, three, four, and just write dots above the notes. Now, which one would you prefer to read? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> so that's the last part about the basic notation rules that I want to mention. Let's now move on. I'm going to uh, wipe the board and let's now work out how you're going to um, work out how to write the rhythms because the hardest part is always working out the rhythms. Let's move on to that now. Okay, number three over here is work out the rhythm. So this is by far the trickiest bit. Most people can are a bit better at working out the notes of their transcription than they are working out the rhythms. Now, what's going to give you a big leg up is doing all the points that we've done so far, which is laying out your your uh, the structure and the format of your music before you start. That's going to make a big difference because quite often people just write big, long strings of rhythm and they don't even fit into bars. <laughs> so let's look at the first point here. Now, this is the biggest point, which is subdivide your rhythm into the smallest subdivision of the beat. What do I mean by that? Let's say the rhythm is da 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 just a simple rhythm that everyone knows, okay? And let's say it's three, four, da 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 Right, how do you go about notating that rhythm? What you have to do is think about it in your head in the smallest subdivision of the beat. Now, what's the smallest subdivision of the beat? In this case, it's da 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's 16th notes. Three and a four, or a, a, da, da, a, da, da, a, da, a, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you've got four chunks to each beat, which is the smallest, it's the, uh, the smallest resolution, if you like, that you need to work out the rhythm. Now, um, two different ways of doing this. One is that you could write the rhythm out in a more familiar format. Like, let's say you wanted to write it out in double time. So, bum, 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 two, three, four. If you want to write it in eighth notes, that's quite a good little hack to get you in there. So let's write it in eighth notes. Um, now, if it was in eighth notes, it would be like this. Dun, 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 okay? two, three, four. <laughs> right, that's what the rhythm looks like in eighth notes. Two, three, four, bum, 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 bum. There's another way of, uh, um, of writing that. You could write it like this. Bum, 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 bum. So basically, the, basically the same thing, just with the rest. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna make every note value there half as much and then you've got your rhythm that's why this is quite a good hack so let's make every um let's make every rhythm there exactly half so the first note's an eighth note now it needs to be a 16th note the second note is a uh, quarter note uh, crotchet it needs to be a quaver okay so i'm just going to write the note heads out again like this so um semi quaver quaver Semi-quaver, quaver, quaver. Now, remember that you need to bar, you need to bar your rhythms into individual beats to make it more readable. So I'm just gonna make these now into individual beats that we can see. And the way you do it with um, 16th notes is you do that. Bum, 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 bum. Now look, here's a great example of what I mentioned before. I'm not going to write that because that's just really annoying to read. So I'm still going to keep that as a quarter note, okay? Bum, 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 bum. There we go. And that is the rhythm now in half time the way we want it. So that, if you look over there, that's, um, that's point one, which is sketch it in double time and then half it. That might help you out. 
Now, if you if that doesn't help, let's rub all this out. If that doesn't help and you still can't work out the rhythm, this is the next thing to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a timeline for yourself, all right? So let's create a little timeline and it's going to be all 16th notes, okay? Divided into individual beats. So here is my timeline of 16th notes, right? Boom, 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 boom. It's a bit messy, but it doesn't matter. You get the idea. Right. Then what you have to do is work out your rhythm whilst clapping every single one of those subdivisions. So here's my subdivisions. Okay. And sometimes it can happen if you vocalize the gaps between the notes that you're trying to notate. So so let's now put it into practice. Where are those notes falling on the timeline? Well, we know the first two are definitely hits. Bum 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 bum. So there's one off, and then we hit the next one. Bum 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 bum. And then it's alternate. So hit no hit. No. Bum, bum, mm, bum, bum, mm, bum, mm, bum. And there's your final note, which falls there. So what you'll, what you'll see is that there's nothing on those, there's nothing on those, okay? And there's nothing on these. Now, it's just a question of notating that and kind of taking out the gaps in the timeline. And the, the way that we do that is you can see that we've got this 16th note that those two make up an eighth note okay so 16th note eighth note there's another 16th note now remember we now have to observe the gap between beats like i mentioned before now these two make up an eighth note these two make up an eighth note so there's two eighth notes and then finally, this one makes up um, a quarter note. Now let's do our barring. So if I just leave that down there and then go to a different color to show you what the barring would actually look like, it's this. Dun, 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 dun. Now because that looks a bit messy, <clears throat> I'm just gonna tidy up for you. And you'll soon realize that it's exactly the same rhythm that we were using before which is dun 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 I'm just going to ignore the doorbell that went off in the background so that's another way of working out the rhythms is to sketch out every subdivision and then mark in almost like you're hanging it where, where your rhythm sits on that timeline okay so the third pointer is to mark in signposts that you definitely know and then fill in the gaps. So let's go back to our um, silly example we're using. Da -da 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 -da. What you would do is, you know that it starts on beat one, three, four, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. and you know that it finishes on beat three. So you'd mark, you'd mark out your beats, okay? There's beat one, there's beat two, there's beat three, and then, of course, you've got your bar line. We know that there's a beat we know that there's a note here. We know that there's a note here. Okay? Ba -da, ba -da, bum, bum. Now, once you've got those signposts in place, you start to investigate the other beats. Is there anything on beat two? Three, four. Ba -da, ba -da. Yes, there is. Now, from those signposts, you start to build up the rhythm. So you go, Ba -da, ba -da, bum, bum. So you know that there's two notes on the second beat. Ba -da, ba one, two, da. So then you put in your two beats. Well, they must be eighth notes. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. That just leaves the first beat to work out. And there's three notes in there, aren't there? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. So how are those three beats divided? Is it a triplet? Are there. Are there three even notes through the bar? That would be bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Well, it's not that. Okay, so. 
what else could it be? It could be it could be two sixteenth notes and a quaver. <laughs> or an eighth note. I never know whether to use British or American, but is it da 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 da? No, it's not. So it's not that. Okay, so back to the drawing board. Is it bum bum bum? Dun 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 dun. No, we know it's not that either. So that's only leaves one alternative, which is dum bum 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 bum, and that turns out to be exactly what it is. But of course, as we mentioned before, we want to do the right barring. So let's do it like that. Bum 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 bum. So when you use signposts to mark in the beats that you definitely know then it's much easier to fill in the gaps as you go along. Now, the final point is if you are using software, which is exactly what we'll be doing when we do the example uh, just shortly, get the computer to play it back. And if it doesn't sound like the original, you know that you've notated it wrong. So that's uh, a, a really great hack. Okay, finally, we're gonna move on to some tips about working out the actual notes now that we've talked about working out the rhythms. So if you look over there on the fourth point in the infographic, um, how do you work out your pitches? Well, this bit I'm not gonna to spend too long on because presumably you've, you sh you've worked out the notes already on your sax and it's just a question of writing it down, which is what we're focusing on today. But if you can't quite work out the pitch you're on, here's a few quick tips before we move on to some examples and we see how all this works in practice. So first tip, remember the tonal center you're in to narrow down the options, okay? If you're doing uh, do a dear, do 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 well, it's probably all on a C major scale. Okay, you worked out the scale, you know it's all on a C major scale, so when you come to work out, you know, the next note, it's probably gonna be in a C major scale, or quite often solos are on a pentatonic, or they're in a key. So use that as your first port of reference, you know, your first port of call, rather. Um, what key am I in? What are the most likely notes? Don't start playing every chromatic note to find it, because that is a waste of time. Secondly, do the signposts method that we did with the rhythms. For example, if you're doing do a do, you might know it goes ba 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 ba. Okay, ba 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 ba. Well, you know that it starts on C, so you can just sketch in a C. Ba ba. You know that the the note on the second beat is an E, so you sketch that one in. Ba ba ba. Ba 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 ba, and you know that that E continues. Ba 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 ba. So you're going to put all these E's in like that. Then you just have to fill in the gaps. Now, um, what's the note that's missing it in the middle? Well, it's not going to be a D flat. It's not going to be an E flat. So it's probably a D, and it turns out that it is. Okay. Da da da. Now, what's the next missing note? Well, it's not going to be a C sharp. It's not going to be a B flat. And um, you can work through the notes of the C major scale. Um, do, 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 do. And it's actually a C, isn't it? Do, do, do. Look at my messy notation. Honestly, I'm, I've got to rewrite that. <laughs> do, that's more like it. Okay. Do, 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 do. And now we know this is the same note again. So we sketch that one. Da, da, da. And there we go, we filled it in using the notes that we knew. We knew it was that one, we knew it was that one, and then you fill in the gaps. So that's another way of working out what the pitches are by using the most likely candidate and putting in your signposts, first of all. And again, like with the rhythms, get your software to play it back. And if it's not playing the right notes, then you're not playing the right notes. You haven't written the right notes. So let's now see how all this fits. We're gonna do uh, one example with a kind of swingy eighth note based rhythm and one example which is more a 16th based funk example. So I'm going to switch screens and let's see what happens where the rubber hits the road. 
OK, now you learn some of the theory. Let's see how this works in practice when the rubber hit, hits the road. So we're going to do two examples. One is going to be uh, in a swing style and one is going to be in a funk style. So you can see how it works with mainly eighth notes and mainly sixteenth notes. So the swing example, we're just going to look at In the Mood, Glenn Miller, the bit that goes da 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 ba do ba dee 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 do do ba do 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 ba do do da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da 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 We're just going to do that eight bars. So looking at our basic infographic then over there. First of all, we've got setup and formatting. So time signature, what we got? One, two, three, four, one, ba doo -dee -dee -dee. So we're in four, four, and there's no point in writing it half or double time. So our four, four time signature is absolutely fine as it is. Key signature, this is in concert A flat. Most of the notes, almost all the notes, I think maybe apart from one, are in the actual key. So for this example, I'm going to use a key signature. I'm going to decide to use a key signature. It's in concert A flat major, which is going to be B flat major for tenor, because I'm going to write it in tenor pitch. And there it is. We've got two flats for B flat major. Now then, how many bars per line? It's a standard sort of swing rhythm, so I'm going to stick to four bars per line. And the song is in eight bar sections, so that works perfectly. I've got our four bars already laid out. And the nice double bar line at the end of each eight bars. OK, lay out the structure of the song. Now, in this case, we're just going to be doing one section, but we'll call it letter A anyway. And maybe down here, we'll call this letter B. But if you were doing, say, a blues, you might do it, you, <laughs> not might, you would do it in 12 bar chunks, label each chorus, or if you had an A, A, B, A song, you know, you might label it A1, A2, B, A3, and then start again for the new chorus. So lay out the structure of your song, very important. Now we've got the whole map and we can put the notes in there without getting lost, that's very important. So that takes care of number one. Let's move on to number two now which is, you know, now we're into the basic notation rules and working out the rhythms and all that stuff. So that's fine. So, ba -da -ba, ba -dee 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 -dee, that's the first phrase. Now it's syncopated. So if we use our timeline and the smallest subdivision is eighth notes or quavers. So it goes, da -da -da -da, we're going to miss out the third. So we've got the first, the second and the fourth eighth notes or quavers in that grouping. Now, just to make sure that Sibelius plays it in a swing style, I'm going to write swing in there. So, uh, I've already worked out the pitches, which you probably would have as well. So, let's now get our notes in here. So, do, 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 rest. Do, and that's tied over, and it lasts for the whole next part of the bar. Now, remember I said if you're using software, you can check it. So, let's play it back. Perfect. Now we move on to the second measure, second bar, and it's three, four, one. Ba -du, ba -du, du. So you can hear that there's um, there's fresh air on the first beat. Three, four, um, ba -du, ba -du, ba. and then there's strings of quavers. So let's mark in that now. So we're going to have an eighth note or a quaver rest. Du -du -du, du -du 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 and that's tied over like that. Um, that takes care of the first two bars. Now, here's the beauty of using notation software as opposed to writing it out. You can copy and paste stuff, which is very useful. But first of all, let's check it, play it back. Four, one. Brilliant, love it. Okay, now we know that it's the same rhythm for the next two bars, da -da -da -ba -do -ba -do -ba, there's just one note changes. So I'm going to repeat that. I don't need to repeat the swing. Da -da -da -ba -do -ba -da -da. And that um, one note is all that's different in there. All right. Then we have the first two bars again. Again, I'm going to have to get rid of that swing bit because it copied with it. Da -da -da -ba -do -ba -ba -da. So let's now check it all through. So far, we've got it's actually not the same as the first two bars, it's the same as the third and fourth. But there is one difference. And that is that there's an extra note at the end of the bar. Because if I play from here, it, it's going to go ba da ba ba da ba da ba 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 So there's a leading note. Now, sometimes the hard bits are when you have to work out 
which is the lead in where the beats are. And if you haven't got a note on beat one, it does make it more difficult. Now look at this. This is suddenly looking a bit weird. You can't have two quavers tied over like that. So I'm going to change that into um, a crotchet, into a quarter note. Ba -do -ba -do -ba. In fact, I might even ba -do -ba -do -ba -ba -da. I might even make it a short note like that. Okay, now we just got to fill in the final two bars, which is so obviously there's a lot of quavers eighth notes in a row, so but then the final rhythm ba ba da ba 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 da ba 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 by the way. Obviously, um, what I haven't mentioned so far is that when you're writing swing, the triplets are implicit. The, the swing rhythm is implicit. So you just write eighth notes and you let the performer take care of the swing, which is what we're doing. So instead of da 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 it's da 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 But you never need to write, you know, dotted notes or triplets to do that. The, the fact that it says swing takes care of that. And that's true of any, any jazz swing. Thing that you're writing down. Okay, ba -da 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 -da. so the final bar. Ba ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba. So we've got a note there. Now remember, one of the tips was put in your signposts. So have we got any signposts? Ba ba da. So we know that there's a note on the second beat. So let's get that one in, and we know that it's a quaver, and it's actually a. Uh, is actually a D flat. Da, 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 uh. But there's nothing on beat three. So that's going to be a rest. And then to round out the whole thing, we finish on the B flat like that. Let's play it back and make sure that everything is okay. Here we go. So far, so good. So far, so good. Good. Okay, jolly good, that is perfect. So let's just check that we've got all the basic notation rules in place. Can we see the half bar? Yes, we can, because that is tied. Now, just to give you an example of what not to do, if you did this, that would be completely wrong. That would be really, really difficult to read because you can't see the half bar. So that's why we have the uh, eighth note or quaver tied so that we can see this gap halfway through the bar. So that's that's really important. And yes, we can see the half bar. Again, same thing, see the half bar, see the half bar, uh, see the half bar, see the half bar, see the half bar. And that's why these, these uh, notes are barred like this. For example, you could, in theory, do something like this um, and you could, you know, the, it's still the, the right number of, of um, eighth notes in the bar, but that is completely wrong because you're barring over the half bar. So that's not what you want to do. You want to make sure that you are you bar things together in, in half bar chunks. And finally, yes, we can see the half bar there, so that's fine. Um, all the bars add up, we know that already. And um, ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee so if this was a short note, okay. Uh, right, now here's a, here's a good example of using a staccato instead of a short note. So I could just put a dot on that if I want. Ba -ba -da -ba. Okay, the wrong way to do it would be this. If I did that and took away the dot, now, how difficult is that to read? <laughs> the answer is very difficult compared to that. <laughs> so that's a good example of using uh, staccatos instead of instead of shortening note values to to notate short notes. Okay, so I think I'm looking at the infographic now, and uh, that takes care of everything. All the bars add up. We can see the half bars, we can see the beats clearly, and there's no weird and sketchy rhythms. So let's now move on to a second example, which is using 16th notes in a funk style. Okay, for our second example, I've chosen the the uh, closing 
horn line at the end of What is Hip by Tower of Power. It goes da ba ba da ba 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 da ba ba da. I don't know if you know that song, but if you check out the end of What is Hip by Tower of Power, you'll hear this line. Now, it's a funk song, so let's go through exactly the same process as we did again uh, from the infographic. So, starting off with our time signature. Is it in 4-4? Four, four? Yes, it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, four, 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 2, 3, 4. Now, when I said about half time or double time, this is one of these ones that you could actually write it as one, two, three, four, one, two, ba da 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 one, two, three, four. But it doesn't make much sense because in this genre, people are used to reading 16th notes. So I'm going to keep it as the slow four and we're going to write it all in da 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 Okay? So that takes care of the time signature. Now the key signature. Um, so this is going to be in E minor for tenor, which is concert D minor, and all the notes are within that... Um, or within that key pretty much I think so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the I'm going to choose to write the key signature now this is in D minor so that's going to make it E minor for tenor which is one sharp because that's the relative major is G major okay that's the key signature now how many bars per line now this is a little bit more tricky because it's a funk thing so I'm going to start with four bars per line and then when I put the notes in because I'm using software I can do this if it turns out to be a bit busy, then I'll reconsider. But we know it's a uh, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, four, two, three. It's a four bar phrase, so we're just gonna stick to that for the moment. So if it turns out to be too crowded, then we'll reconsider it. But I'm just gonna start with four bars per line and take it from there. Now the layer or the structure of the song, this is just a four bar riff, which repeats. So I'm actually just gonna mark in the repeat in here which also is going to take up a bit more space in the line, which is another factor. So you might want to, I don't know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's all the thrill of the chase, isn't it? Right, that takes care of part one. And now we're into the notation of the song. So the first part goes one, two, three, ba, 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 ba. So you can use all the different methods that we talked about with notating the rhythms, but what are the signposts? One, two, three, ba, ba. So we know that there's definitely two beats to start with. I was, I was singing it completely the wrong key, never mind. So one, uh, two, uh, 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 three, e, e, ba, ba. So there's one sixteenth note before the fourth beat. So I'm going to tie that over. Uh, I'm going to tie that, oops, yeah, I'm going to tie that over. And what we're going to have here is a dotted, a dotted quaver, a dotted eighth note. Uh, and then a 16th no so the final beat goes one two three ba da ba ba da ba da 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 remember subdivide so da 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 now interestingly this is exactly the same rhythm as the first rhythm from the swing one remember in um in the mood we had ba da ba Da da ga. This is just the same thing, but the rhythms are twice as fast. Da with uh, different notes, obviously. Da da da. Da. Um, actually, I'm going to make that an eighth note. Da 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 da. Da. Now, here's the tricky bit. Now, because that's a short note, I'm going to mark that as a short note. I could do it. I could do it like this. Okay, but it's a little bit easier sometimes to read it like that. So, ba, one, two, three, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. Now, the tricky bit here is that um, we've got no signpost on the first beat of the second bar because we go one, two, three, four, ta, ba. It's, on, it's actually on the second sixteenth of that bar, which is a bit of a tricky one. But if you were, if you sketched out your timeline, you'd be able to mark that in. So, We've got a 16th note, rest. Da, 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 da. So, how long is this note? Ba, da, 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 two, three, four. It, it kind of lasts the whole bar, but here's a, little, here's a little tip for you when you're writing parts for a horn player. Try and leave a little uh, breathing space, all right? So, now, 
Here's a little philosophical question. Should we write it like this and then tie it over again? Because that is officially what you should do so that you can leave the half bar in there, see? But in this case, and this is where just, you know, experience starts to come through a little bit. I think if you had that there, that's still perfectly readable because even though you can't see the half bar, there's nothing else in the bar. So you hit that note and you just count the rest of the bar. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that call on that one. Now let's play it back and see if it's right. One, two, three. So far so good. Now the next signpost is on the third bar. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da. So one, two, three. So we've got a note on beat one and we've got a note on beat three. So there's a really strong signpost to mark in. So it's going to be a half note. So bah. and then we're into our the, the same rhythm as before. Da ga ga, da ga ga, da ga ga. But the whole rhythm is da ga 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 ga. Four. Da ga 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 ga. Da ga 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 ga. Da da ga ga ga. So use your timeline, and we're going to have. And then, now this is the tricky bit. Two. And then it's just a long note, which I'm going to do as a dotted minimum so that there's a chance to breathe in here and play again. So let's check this rhythm. Now the reason it sounds wrong is because on the original that's a short note, so let's mark that in. Perfect. So the tricky bit about this rhythm is the fact that it comes in an eighth note, a quaver earlier than the bar. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, boom. So these are the things that you just get by experience. Mark out your 16th note timeline, hang the notes on it, like you're hanging out your washing, <laughs> hang your notes on that washing line, that timeline, and that way you can see where the subdivisions are. And remember all the things that we learned before. For example, subdivide to the smallest part, to the smallest rhythm, which in this case is 16th notes. Uh, you can sketch it out in twice as fast and then half it. So remember that this rhythm here is exactly the same as the first eighth note rhythm we had in um, in in the mood. Ba da ba, quite a common rhythm both in funk and in swing. Mark in your signposts. For example, we had the signpost there on beat one and a signpost there on beat three, and you can check by playing it back on the software which we've done. Let's do it one more time. Two, three, four. Okay, so that's all playing back nicely. And now we know that we've written it precisely. It looks really neat. And let's check, we can see the half bar here. Now, remember I argued that we don't need to see the half bar there, but we can see the half bar there. And again, because it's just a long note, that's one of the exceptions to the, um, you know, being able to see the half bar. All the 16th notes are contained in their own little beat. Now, for example, here, what would be very wrong is that, okay? <laughs> and you'll see rhythms like this sometimes. That is really, really wrong. So you wanna make sure that you've got um, rhythms, you know, where you can see each beat. And in that case, you can see the whole beat on its own. We can see that beat there, and we can see this beat there, okay? So here's an example of what not to do, for example, okay? If I made that like that, look at that. <laughs> it's a complete mess. It's really difficult to read. If you saw that and you were reading a chart, that would throw you right off. Whereas that is very, very easy to read. So hopefully that will cover some of the main issues, which will really help you to write down your solos when you're writing out music. 
So that is all we have time for this week. Hopefully you've got some real good, solid, actionable tips on how to write out music, how to notate your transcriptions much more successfully than you could do before. Remember, you can get your free PDF infographic of the four step process by using the link there or clicking the link in the description. Now, if, you've, uh, if you wanna take this even further, you can join my Inner Circle community. It's a private community full of loads of enthusiastic um, saxophonists just like you. There's an absolutely awesome community and there's loads of great content which is really gonna move your sax playing along. It's a great opportunity to uh, step much more into my world. I'm much more available there to help people and interact with you in a day-to-day -day level. So go and check out the Inner Circle membership. Finally, uh, if you have bought me a coffee, I really much appreciate it. You can see the link there if you feel like you're getting good value from these lessons. Until next week, where you'll get more absolutely phenomenal saxophone lessons <laughs> brought right to your screen from the coffee era of your own home. That's easy to say, of your own home. Um, like I always say, practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy. Over there, you can see it's not over there, it's over there, right.